Hey, it's Mike Stiles. Here's the content marketing quickie for the week ending April 14th. Let's talk about something you care about deeply, you, and how much you can earn in your career. McKinley Marketing Partners did a survey to see who's getting hired in marketing and what skill sets are most in demand right now. Ayaz Nanji reports the biggest lesson, you better know and be comfortable with marketing technology. The biggest jump in expertise that hirers are looking for was in digital marketing, 27% more than last year. As for skills with the most planned hires this year, it's a tie between general marketing and content management. Then comes communications. If you're just getting started or are still the junior level type, the most jobs for you are going to be in digital marketing, analytics, and content management. But you can't ignore those mysterious soft skills either. Most, 64%, say problem solving is essential. Then comes elegant thought articulation, analytical thinking, company culture fit, and personality. And here you thought you were going to get by just on your sparkling personality. We all think marketing technology is cool, but there is that line that has creepy written on it. Steve O'Hare tells us that a new ad unit from Viking called Reactive Ads is able to watch you right back when you're watching it using your device's camera, see what facial expressions you're making using emotion, face, and gesture recognition, and have the ad react to how you are reacting to it. You've got to opt in, of course, because some people like to be watched and others, you know, call the police. They say they don't store pictures of you. Everything's done in real time. CEO Matthew Klemke says something interesting, that it offers up a whole new metric. He says any effective advertising evokes an emotional response. This technology will enable advertisers to hone in on the raw, unfiltered emotions from their campaigns. Advertisers need more KPIs to measure engagement beyond clicks. Emotional engagement will become the new KPI of advertising effectiveness. Are you still trying to game Google? Come on, join us in 2016 because a lot has changed and even more is in the process of changing. If you don't already, you should know about Rank Brain. That's Google's artificial intelligence they're using to decipher vague, long-tail-type queries and deliver relevant results. 15% of searches are getting rank brain applied to it, and Google's Greg Corrado says it's the third biggest contributing signal. If you're ever playing Google trivia with friends, A, God help you, and B, there are over 200 search signals Google uses. Al Gomez tells us how content marketers should start dealing with rank brain. Narrow that audience and answer problems they may search. I mean really narrow. Make your content sound human and natural, like you're talking to a person. Steve Baldwin of DidIt.com says, Think long form because Rank Brain uses co-occurrence. How often similar terms are in the content. We're not talking about keyword stuffing. We're talking about similar or synonymous terms. Lastly, refer to authoritative sources because it helps the algorithm figure out the intent of your post. If you start seeing more Facebook posts with marketing stuff like end cards, brand logos, product placement, do not be surprised. What, my warning isn't good enough? All right, I'll explain further. Facebook is now letting publishers and marketers share brand content on the platform. AJT Santos reports that it's not like a free-for-all. There are still a few guidelines in place, like you still can't do branded or sponsored cover photos or profile pictures, you can't watermark, and you can't do pre-roll ads. But trust me, the brand content is going to flow. A new tool from Facebook even lets publishers tag the brand being promoted in the content. Facebook's VP of Partnerships, Nick Gruden, said, We know many of our partners have existing partnership deals with marketers, and this gives them the ability to extend their branded content business onto Facebook. Can I ask you a question and have you answer it honestly? No? Well, here's what I was going to ask. Do you want people to engage with your content or not? Because if you're gating your content and making people fill out a form to get it, you have a wildly inflated sense of how great and valuable your content is. You're lucky they found it. You're even luckier they're clicking on it, but then you want to withhold it unless they sacrifice themselves to you as a lead. Anna Tellerico reports that gating is taking a back seat to quality interactive content. When Demand Metric tested a gated interactive white paper against an ungated version, 
the ungated drove 33% more leads than the gated version. How? The ungated version had an optional form to get a PDF version. Plus, Anna points out most people are smart enough to find the info they need somewhere else without coming through your gate. It's been decided by others that you have too many choices. For instance, you have a choice as to whether or not to watch a video ad in your messaging apps. Well, you did. Brielle Jekyll reports Snapchat's 2.0 update lets marketing content get right in your face and roll without a click. Mark Cluett, who's a marketing manager at Polar Toronto, says, Before, even if a user chose to follow a brand on Snapchat, they had to manually interact with the brand to see what they shared. Now, videos from brands will see more views and engagement as users stumble upon them naturally. But with great power comes, that's right, great responsibility. Cluett goes on to say, if a user is inundated with stories from only brands when they're expecting a stream of content from celebrities, friends, news sources, they'll unfollow very quickly. The warning? Brands better share less content that is more valuable. Now, it's not like Snapchat is the only one in the in-your-face video business. Twitter's had first view since February, letting you get your paid video content to the top of users' feeds for 24 hours. When that happened, there was some wondering going on, wondering if users would rebel. They haven't. In fact, they've hardly noticed them at all. Does that surprise you? David Newman, director of social media services for Prime Visibility, says... Users are so accustomed to seeing native ads across all their social feeds, the rollout of First View isn't going to be met with much backlash. And as John Montesi writes, Twitter's an easy place to quickly get those native ads in barely noticed, as opposed to pre-roll ads before YouTube videos. And since they run for only 24 hours, users don't see it often enough for it to sink in that it's an ad. We don't do a lot of stories about gaming, but hey, it's a very valid channel on which to do content marketing. And a Unity Technologies report tells us whether or not gamers are turned off by in-game video ads. Brandy Shaw reports that it depends. If it's a run-of-the-mill, full-screen picture ad, 39% of developers say their players left the game either a little faster or even a lot quicker than usual. But if the players get rewarded for watching a video ad, that's a whole different ballgame app. 78% are open to watching reward video ads, and 71% prefer that as a way to pay for in-game content. Well, okay, but such video ads would hurt other in-app purchases, right? Nopers. 86% of developers say they weren't affected or even went up after reward video ads were introduced. You've put together some dynamite downloadable content. Maybe it's even about dynamite. So learn now what device people are most likely to download your stuff onto. Limelight Networks knows because their state of digital downloads report found that overall 45% of people are more likely to download all kinds of digital content than last year. But here's the big news. The smartphone just now passed PCs as the device most downloading is done on specifically Android smartphones. The iPad and Android tablets were almost tied at second and third. As for what's downloaded, eContent reports, other than OS updates, it's new apps at 33%, video games at 18%, and movies and TV content at 13%. Most downloading happens from 6 p.m. to midnight. But whenever it's done, that download needs to be fast, especially millennials have no patience for slowness or hang-ups. Are you ready to chat with Facebook Messenger's 900 million users? Among the many announcements at their big F8 shindig to-do, they said there will now be a Messenger chatbot platform, and you, Mr. or Ms. Brand, can pay to bot message those poor souls who connected with you at one time on Messenger. Sponsored messages are being tested, and one of the things they're really trying to figure out is how to keep this experience from being, you know, hated. Facebook's VP of product, David Marcus, says, These will definitely be limited. We're very paranoid about that. Josh Constein writes, What we all know is true. When Messenger buzzes right now, you know it's a friend. That assurance could go away. In addition to sponsored messages, Facebook also announced Click to Message which can be put right into newsfeed ads. 
That's it for now. The transcript is at MikeStyles.com.